Hi, this is Rick Kolk, and today we're going to develop a VisSim embedded application to blink the red LED on a Texas Instrument F28069M launch pad development kit using a VisSim slider block. We will also discuss terminology including host, target, source model, and debug model, and we will present an example of rapid prototyping using VisSim embedded. In VisSim terminology, the host refers to the PC that is running the VisSim embedded application. The target consists of the microcontroller board. In our case, it is a Texas Instrument F28069M board. And the plant consists of the actual plant being controlled, including its sensors, actuators, and other physics. The plant is controlled by an algorithm running on the target processor. For many applications, the code generation and code debug steps are viewed as separate tasks and we recommend that two VisSim embedded models be constructed, one for each task. The source model typically consists of a compound block containing the algorithm model with input and output pins. CodeGen is applied to the source model to create the out file. In the debug model, which typically consists of a target interface block configured to operate with the out file, the interactive data exchange communicates data between the host and target. Signal producer blocks send dynamic data from the host to the target, and signal consumer blocks receive dynamic data from the target for processing and display on the host. In this example, we will illustrate host-to-target communication. We will use a slider block to blink the frequency of the red LED on the Texas Instrument F28069M launch pad board. We will use two models, the source model named Blink Red LED with Slider, the debug model will be named Blink Red LED with Slider D. In step one, we will create our source model. We'll begin the model by going to Embedded, Piccolo, and obtaining an F28 configuration block, making sure the CPU is set correctly, in this case to the F28069M board, making sure the clock source is the internal oscillator, and we have the correct JTAG connection, that is the T1 XDS100 V2 USB. Everything else will take as default. Hit OK and place this block on the screen. Next, we'll create a frequency using a slider block, going to Block, Signal Producer, Slider. Placing the slider on the screen, I'll configure it to take on values between 1 and 10 in increments of 1. And I'll capture the output of the slider in a variable named frequency hertz. Next, we'll create our square wave using the repeating time model that I created and saved under the My Models folder. Placing the block diagram on the screen and connecting the input hertz to our variable frequency hertz, I will modify the output signal by passing it first through a boolean less than block and comparing it with 0.5. This will create a 50% duty cycle square wave, meaning that the square wave over its period will be on half its time and off the other half. I will set the simulation up to try this out. We'll run this for 25 seconds in real time, and I will attach a plot box to capture the square wave. And I'm going to record it right here. And we'll look at a few frequencies. So I'll start this off. We're at 1 hertz. And let me stop this and readjust the plot so we can see the full height of the square wave. I'll just set the vertical axes 0 to 2. And let me stop this here. And let's go in and measure this using the read coordinates feature. So what I'm reading here is uh, 6.5 to 7. So this is a half a second on and half a second off. 
Well, this makes sense for one hertz. Let me increase to two and rerun the simulation. And we'll check this. I will pause it and repeat the same process. And let me enlarge this a little bit. I'm zooming in on it. And I will re-coordinates. The on time is measured as get this here to here is 0.25 seconds, followed by an off time of 0.25, which is a 2 hertz signal. And we can increase this to 4 hertz and rerun it. And I'll pause it. Let's blow the plot up. And again, just take a look at a part of this waveform. I'll repeat the same step. Re-coordinates. And then retain and re-coordinates again to get the difference between the previous and the current crosshairs. X minus X naught is 0.125 seconds, which means that we have a period equal to twice that value, or 0.25, which corresponds to 4 hertz. So at this point, it looks like we've created a square wave that we can control with this slider. What we'll do next is capture the output into an embedded digital output block. And since we're controlling the red LED, this is going to be a digital output that will be channel 34. And we will attach the output of our Boolean to channel 34. In step two, we're going to do our code gem for this algorithm. First, we will capture the algorithm into a compound block. And I'm going to name it target calculations place the block here on the screen and I should have one input and no outputs it's showing an output here so I'm going to delete the output and I'm just going to go inside the block and make sure everything looks good it does moving outside in order to generate code I will First, lasso the target calculation block. Go to the Tools Code Gen window. Now, in this window, the result file will be named Blink Red LED with Slider C. The target is the F280X, and I want to select a Include the VisSim Communication Interface. Taking the rest as defaults, so I'll click Compile. And we see the compile and link steps here in the DOS window. Press any key to continue. And at this point, we have created our out file. And we can quit the code generation box. Now we want to make sure that we save our source diagram. So I will save it. In step three, we're going to create our debug model. To do that, we simply take the source model and we will save it as the debug model, which is the same name as the source model, dash D. Now I need to edit the debug model by first replacing the target calculation compound block with a target interface block located under Embedded, Piccolo, way at the bottom, Target Interface. And I will place that here, replacing the blue compound block. And I'm going to configure the target interface so that it's using the out file that I just created. I can give it any name I want to. Now you'll notice that the target interface has detected that I have one input and zero outputs in that out file. So it's presenting the block that way. And I'm not going to bother showing the CPU utilization, so I will turn that off. Click OK. And we have configured the target interface block. I'll connect that now to the frequency signal. 
and we'll save the debug diagram. At this time, we're ready to run the algorithm on the target board. Before starting, I will set the system properties so that we run this for 50 seconds in real time from the host. And we'll begin selecting Go. And we initially see the out file being downloaded to the target. And now you can see on the target where I'm pointing the red LED is flashing at 1 hertz. Let me increase the frequency to 2 hertz, and you'll see it blinking at 2 hertz. And let's go to 3 and 4 and so on. Rapid prototyping is simple with VizSim embedded. Under the VizSim window menu, we see the debug and the source diagram. Suppose I wanted to make a change to the duty cycle of my red LED blink. I would go to the source diagram located under the window menu. And in this case, let's say I wanted to change my duty cycle from 50% to 90%. I would make the change in the source diagram. I would regenerate code. And then under Windows, switch back to my debug diagram. The changes are automatically included in the dot out file, which is in the target interface block. So all I do at this point is run. And we will see the change now on the target board. You'll notice the red LED is staying on for 90% of its cycle time. If I increase to 2 hertz, you'll see it almost look like it's solid on, and so on. So in this example, you've learned how to construct a source diagram, automatically generate code, load the diagram, run it on the target board with interactive communication, and conduct rapid prototyping using the source and debug models. Thank you.